Safiya uh, says, is wearing niqab an obligation or a voluntary act? And what are the evidences from the Quran and Sunnah as why to wear the niqab? Niqab is what is known as a face veil. So whatever a woman wears on her face, this veil with an opening for the eyes, this is called niqab. And it's called niqab because of the opening of the eyes. It's naqab, which is a hole. And this is an obligation according to the most authentic opinion of scholars. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in the Quran in chapter 33, Surah Al-Ahzab. In verse 53, he orders the mothers of the believers who are the wives of the Prophet to communicate with companions of the Prophet from behind a hijab. And the consensus of all scholars of Muslims that all wives of the Prophet must cover their faces. There's no difference of opinion up, uh, uh, upon them or among them. All wives of the Prophet must cover their faces. And this ayah 53, it, whenever you ask for utensils from them, ask from behind a screen. This is purer for your hearts and their hearts. So, so this, is, this is total segregation. You cannot see the wives of the Prophet faces. This is verse 53. Now, having this at the back of your mind, and moving six verses later, from the same surah, Allah says in verse 59, Ya ayyuhal ya nabi, O Prophet of Allah, قُلْ لِأَزْوَاجِكَ وَبَنَاتِكَ وَنِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Command your wives, your daughters, and the women of the Muslims. يُدْنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنْ جَلَابِي بِهِنْ To lower down from their garments. This is more befitting that they are not recognized so that they are not harassed. Now, in this ayah, the command is for three types of women to lower their garments so that they're not identified. So, the wives of the Prophet, the daughters of the Prophet, the women of the Muslims, three types. Now, if you compare this ayah to verse 53, where it commands the wives of the Prophet to cover their faces. If you come and compare this ayah to this ayah, the command in this ayah is for what? To cover their faces. But in addition for the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, Allah included the daughters and the women of the Muslims. Which means that they as well should cover their faces as mentioned in Ayat 53 because the mothers of the believers are joined with them in this command in Ayat 59. And there are a lot of other evidences mentioned in the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, which is logical but before it's logical it is the ruling of the quran and the sunnah according to the most authentic opinion of scholars why do we say logical the face of a woman as they say is her identity if her identity is open to all this is what includes features of beauty. This is when she smiles or frowns. This is where expressions happen. And if this is exposed, 
then those with illnesses in their hearts will be surely tempted. And when the Prophet ﷺ showed us the process of getting married, he commanded us to look at the woman we are interested in getting married. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, O Prophet of Allah, I proposed to so-and-so from the Ansar. So the Prophet said, did you look at her before you propose? He said, no. The Prophet said, go and look at her. This means that if the woman was walking in the streets of Medina, going to the shopping centers or to uh, shops or to the masjid, and she was unveiled, the Prophet would not have told him to look at her because the man can see her. But this indicates that every woman, according to Mother Aisha, used to wear the veil and cover from head to toe. There are so many examples that we can talk about, but this is not the time. It is safer for a woman to hide her identity, to hide her beauty, so that she is not harassed. A woman wearing the niqab, no one would come and say, whoa, what a beautiful look, what a gorgeous woman. Nobody would whistle to her. But a beautiful woman who is not covered, she would probably be harassed in such an awful and disrespectful fashion. And Allah Azza wa knows best.